I do cloud. <laughs> All right, guys. So welcome to week four for Guide to Growth. This is the last week for our program. And we're really excited to talk to you guys tonight because this is a big topic. Um, it doesn't matter if you have sponsored already and you have a team or if you want to sponsor, you can definitely get a ton out of this training. And I'm going to go ahead, I guess, and just get started. So as always, if you guys have questions, ask in the chat box. We'll do our very, very best to get to them. Um, but week four. So the topic is keeping the momentum going. And this is gonna cover all kinds of different areas in your business. And I think that you guys are gonna really just get some aha moments tonight. And so I'm so freaking pumped to have Katie and Ray and Chastity here with me. Um, and we want you to know we love you guys. And it has been a true blessing to be able to be a part of your journey this month. Um, we've had several promotions. This doesn't happen in April, guys. It didn't happen because people got stimulus checks, okay? This happened because of you working your business and you deciding to lead from the front. So that is exactly what I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna start this off with talking about um, how to lead from the front. And I wanna open it up with this. Motivation is not sustainable. So you cannot have a thriving business off of wanting to be motivated. And I say that because you'll, you'll learn more about why I'm opening it up this way because when Ray Ray, Katie, and Chastity talk, everything they're gonna say has absolutely nothing to do with motivation. It's something inside when you make a decision and you make your choices to do better in your life and do better in your business. Motivation is like a, to me, it's like a short course of a feeling you already have, right? So I want you guys to understand that Motivation, exactly, Whitney. Motivation is temporary. It's just, it's not going to stay with you. And so if you're wanting to do better, but you want your sponsor to motivate you, right? Or you want your upline to motivate you, it's just not a good mindset to even have, okay? Motivation is great on the short term, but we're going to teach you tonight how to really have a mindset shift of what really matters when it comes to tying all the pieces of weeks one through four in this program are. So leading from the front, I'm going to pull up a little tip sheet that I made for you guys. And pretty much when it comes to leading from the front and leading your team and leading your business and doing all of those things, um, you guys need to understand that when you are building a business and when you are either thinking about building a team or you've already built a team, you need to know that people are looking at you. They're looking at how you react to things. They're looking at how you lead. Just because you think your team is not looking, I can promise you it's not true. They could just be sleeping on your business and you need to build more team members, okay? That's not the same thing. And I think a lot of you guys have small teams and I'm, and I'm gonna just open this up too. We're probably gonna step on some toes tonight and that's totally fine. We are fine with that because we want you guys to really learn what it takes to be a leader and what it takes to not burn out in this business. And, you know, it, it starts and ends with you. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you guys this little document. So obviously you guys know week four files will be ready and they will be uploaded as soon as this training is over, okay? And make sure if y'all are hopping on, just take your video down. So can y'all see this? Just nod your head if you can see this, yeah? All right, so, Leading from the front, this has always been the way that I built my business. Even when I had no systems in place, even when I just, we didn't have all the stuff that we have now um, from trial and error and from learning to do things a bunch of different ways. There was not that whenever I started Cincy. And even when Chastity joined under me, we didn't have any of this stuff. So we literally were just doing the basic components of leadership, which was showing them how we were working and sharing with them how we were working and not doing things, not asking our team to do things that we weren't going to do. And so my golden rule, and I think a lot of you guys know this, if you don't, you're going to learn tonight, do not ask your team if you're a leader. So as soon as you sponsor one person, you're a leader. And guess what? If you haven't sponsored yet, you're going to be ahead of the game because you're going to know how to do things the right way. 
You are not your team's boss. You are not their CEO. You are their leader. And what makes me more sad than anything when I see certain leaders in this, in this group and in all kind all over Cincy is when you guys are just checked out, right? Nobody's home. You're not checking in with your team. You're not leading from the front. Um, yet you're copy and pasting. You have this like copy and paste mentality on your team page. And it's just not the way that you lead. So when you are working your business, okay, that is how you're going to teach your team how to work their business. Do not ask your team to do anything that you are not doing currently or that you have not done recently. Don't teach your team how to recruit. And I'm going to speak to a lot of the SCs, SSCs, directors. Don't tell your team how to recruit or do a copy and paste when you've sponsored one person in 90 days. Okay. That is not called leading from the front. That is not called you know, teaching your team to do things that you're doing. What I want to encourage you guys to do, especially if you're in a slump, whether it's with recruiting or with PRV, obviously in weeks two and three, we help you guys with that. We've created systems for PRV and for recruiting, and we have all kinds of different things, but do not teach your team to do things that you are not currently trying to master. You need to think as a leader, you want to master your trade, right? You don't want to just be an okay consultant that periodically checks your emails that we send, right? There's some of y'all that literally, y'all don't even check our emails. And I don't understand. I had that situation today. You know, it's just flat out disrespectful. And I'm gonna be honest, you wanna be a leader? You need to act like a leader. Don't act like you don't know what's going on. You're on the team page. You're getting emails from us. So if you wanna step up and be in this leadership position, you've gotta take accountability. You should be inviting your teams on this training right now. So you need to make sure that when you're leading from the front, you're on this training tonight, okay? 216 of you, you're leading from the front, right? So that means you didn't just go on your team page and say, hey, get on this training tonight, but you're not on it. You're on it. And they can see you're on it. And if you're on this training, this is where social media is beautiful because you can take a picture and put it in your story and you don't think your team sees it, but they do. And they can see that you're on this training and they can see that you're wanting to develop and be better. Leaders never stop learning. And if you think you're at a point in your business where you don't need to learn, well then you, you're not leading. Okay, so it's time for you to step it back and be like, okay. And again, this is really great for people that are wanting to build a business and you're wanting to build a team. You need to learn early on. This is why we tell you guys, master the three legs of the stool, master the first two. Master your PRV, master your recruiting. So then when you're teaching your team, you're not teaching them out of struggle, you're teaching them out of strength. And you should never wanna teach anybody anything out of, you know, obviously you're gonna be honest with your team if you're struggling in an area, but give them a solution, okay? We're not gonna say, oh, my PRV is $565 this month, but I don't have a solution. No, figure out a solution and do better. Number two, Focus on high PRV and sponsoring to a month. Listen to me. There are several of you who haven't promoted this month because your PRV is low. Why leaders are not reaching for 2,000 PRV a month, I don't know. But listen to me. Slow PRV equals slow growth. Slow PRV equals a slow network. You are not going to grow by keeping your 25 customers you started with from your launch party that you're clinging on to for dear life when you need to be recruiting them, when you need to be focusing on building your, your, your PRV, your sales. Guys, listen, it is so important that you understand this, this part. If you were going to lead from the front and you're going to teach your team how to sell, how are you going to teach them how to sell when you're minimally selling a basic 500? We teach you 500 by the seventh for a reason, because if you're a leader, you should be front loading your calendar right now. If you're a leader, you should be front loading your calendar for May, meaning you already know what's lined up. You know what parties you're going to have. You know what recruiting conversations are going to come into play. Okay. If you are struggling as a leader in your PRV, I want you to focus on 2000 PRV a month. This has nothing to do with me. This has everything to do with you setting a foundation for a healthy, thriving business. You have to constantly get people, you know, buying from you constantly. It doesn't stop guys. All four of us combined this month. I haven't even combined our sales, but 
they're like close to $30,000, all four of us together, okay? Because we are never going to stop growing our sales. Your sales are the way that you have an end for people to buy, host, join, and refer. And again, if you're saying you can't hit 2,000 PRV, it's because you simply aren't trying hard enough. There are 555,000 trainings all over the internet, specifically Guide to Growth, week two, right, on how to get high sales. So I want you, if you're a leader and you have low sales, to focus on your personal business, okay? Because you're not gonna be able to sustain a growing team when you don't have in place your system for getting high PRV, which is why I made an entirely new follow-up system for you guys. There is no reason now, you can't say, I can't afford Maven, no. They're, uh uh, no. I spent eight hours making that, okay? Number three, get systems in place for your personal business. Listen, too many leaders are focused on, oh, when do I start my team page? Oh, when do I do this for my team? Guys, listen, Linda, I need for you to sit down and are you recruiting and do you have high PRV? Because if you don't have those things, if you literally don't have systems for your personal business, for your PRV and for your recruiting, how in the world are you gonna coach your team? What are you gonna coach them on? I'm interested to know. What are you saying to them on the phone if you have no system for your personal business? How are you telling them how to, how to get customers? How are you teaching something that's replicatable and duplicatable? I want you guys to think, can I do right now, like with what I'm doing right now, can I do the same thing with 300 people? Really? Because if I would have done that back then and kept the way I did things, there's no way that any of this would be going on. I actually would have quit. So I want you guys, leaders especially, if you're not a leader, guess what? You're gonna be so prepared. You're gonna have your system in place for PRV and for recruiting. So when you build a team, you've mastered that. But if you're that leader and you just fell in love with your team, and I get it, we love our teams. But if you're that leader and you skipped yourself, you're not on any kind of foundation for your business. It's gonna be rough. It's gonna be really rough for you. So I need for you to go back and I need for you to master your PRV. I need you to have a crap ton of parties. I need you to do all the follow-ups. I need for you to rewatch weeks one, two, and three of Guide to Growth. And you need to get a foundation for your business because if you don't have that, you can't, you're not teaching out of authenticity. You're not teaching your team to do things out of what you're doing. You're teaching them to do a bunch of crap that you, you're, you're not even good at yet. You need to get really good at what you're doing in your personal business for. Decide on the culture you want and trust your ability to lead. The biggest struggle that I see leaders deal with is they let drama happen on these team pages and all this nonsense. Listen, and if that's you and you're causing drama on your team page or you're talking crap about this consultant or that consultant, and there's some leaders on here that I know specifically this has happened, you also need to sit down and you need to evaluate yourself and you need to evaluate the culture you're bringing into Anchored Sense because we don't do that. Okay, we don't do that. And so, and I'm sick and tired of hearing about little drama and this and that and whatever. Listen, that's not what we do. I need for you guys to focus on your businesses and I need for you to share on your team pages how you're succeeding and I need for you to be better together. Okay, it is not your director's team page, it is your team page. Whatever team page you're on, that's your, that you're, you're part of that culture. So you have to make a decision too and eventually, and Ray, Ray, Katie, all of them will probably talk about this, you'll get to a point where, yes, you need your own team page. And if your director doesn't like it, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Anytime my people make team pages, the first thing I make sure is what's your PRV and recruiting. Okay, sit down. If you're not recruiting and you don't have high PRV, we don't need a team page right now, okay? We need to focus on that. So I want you guys to realize your culture. I started this culture, and I'm just going to say it. I didn't like the way the culture was in my upline. I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it was. Didn't like it. So you know what I did? I put my head down and I created this culture. And that is why you guys don't really know even what drama is. If it happens on this team, it's very far and few between. And normally us four are the only ones that know about it. But you are in control right now of creating a positive culture. And Ray Ray's going to talk more about that. Number five, lead every single day. Skipping steps will not make it happen for you. I don't know how many times, I don't know how much clearer to make number five. If you think that you can skip steps, and if you think you can buy somebody's kit to get them certified, and if you think that we can coach your team and you promote and you're gonna keep playing that game, 
We're going to talk about that too. You need to step up. You don't need to rely on your upline to coach your people so you can make a promotion. And some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about and we need to cut that out because you are their leader and you are skipping steps when you decide not to do coaching calls because you don't feel like it. Join the club, okay? I was doing coaching calls before any of y'all and I did them for a year before any of y'all would even do it. Still did them. Don't skip steps. Do it the right way. My dad always taught me the right way is always right and the wrong way is always wrong. Do it right. Six, leadership is not optional. Guys, you don't decide you wanna be a leader because it's a fall incentive. You don't decide that you wanna be a leader because it's April and your teams are selling. This is something that you consistently need to do. When, you know, I wanna challenge you, what do you do behind closed doors when nobody's watching you with your business? What is your behind the scenes? Y'all should have seen all my behind the scenes today. You guys need to understand that leadership, when you are a leader, you're a mentor, you're a world changer, you're all of these things, do not lead occasionally. You're not gonna build a team that trusts you, you're not. They're not gonna wanna work with you. Show up every single day. Seven, be real with your team and build trust with them. Guys, build trust with your team. They're not gonna wanna talk to you, train with you, coach with you, nothing if you don't trust them, or if they don't trust you. That's just the way it is. Leadership is not a copy and paste. I think that's pretty straightforward, right? That means that when you see us do something for um, whatever system we create or whatever, you don't copy and paste that system onto your team page when you have no system of your own. You don't copy and paste exactly what you see another leader doing because you wanna be lazy and you don't wanna come up with your own authentic content for your team page. Your team needs to see you. They need to know who you are. If they don't know who you are, they're gonna know who us four are and they're not gonna to wanna to work with you. And please, we, we don't want that. We want them to work with you. Number eight, focus on being an extraordinary, whatever title you are, and the promotion will come. This is something that Chastity wanted me to add. Well, I, we added it to something else, but I wanted to add it here because this is how she lives and breathes that she promoted to Superstar Director. And I'm a firm believer in this. Guys, so many of y'all are focused on the next step and you're not, do, you're not being great at, at where you're at, right? That's what all these tips are about. You're focused on doing team trainings. You're focused on your team page. You're focused on team mail outs and your personal business sucks. You've got to back up and you got to get your personal business together so you can be really great at all the things that have to do with having a balanced stool, okay? So number nine, leadership is servanthood. If you think you're too good to serve your team, if you, and y'all know this is my pet peeve, if you think you're too good to coach your team, if you think you're too good to show up for your team because you don't feel like it, you're not serving your team and you're not gonna build a team. What you're gonna do is you're gonna recruit a bunch of people that either we're gonna have to train, your upline's gonna have to train, or they're gonna fall off. Serve your team. Leadership isn't about you, not even a little bit. All four of us know that. We live and breathe for you guys. We ride or die for you guys. Y'all may not see it, because we don't text you all the time, we don't do this and that, but behind the scenes, we're doing everything we can to serve you. It doesn't, this program has nothing to do with us. All four of us know how to rock it the hell out. We know how to be successful. Servanthood, serve your team. And number 10, this is my favorite quote of all time for Cincy. This is from Orville Thompson, the CEO. Know the way, go the way, and show the way. Guys, know the way, learn, master it, go the way, do the things. I don't care what training you're on. If you're not doing the things, you're not going to make any moves, okay? And show the way. Guys, some of y'all have these high sales and you're not even going live on your team pages and teaching your team how to do it. It's not okay. Show the way. So that is everything that I have. And next is Ray Ray. All right, there you go. All right, guys. So I am gonna be talking about the number one thing, which is where you should start or you start Feeding into your team, okay, as a leader, um, you have to feed into yourself first. You have to. Because at the end of the day, if, if you are not finding your own energy, 
where's your energy? Where's the energy going to come from to give to other people? Like that's with this business. That's with your relationships, including your significant other. That's with your kids. That's with everything in life. I truly believe that that took me a long time to figure out. And I'm now at a point where I know that if I don't go and do my 23 minute workout or my walk with my dogs down my long ass driveway, then I have nothing to give my business, my husband, nothing. So that's what I'm talking about is self-care and self-development. Okay. Um, you have to put yourself first above everyone, everything. Okay. Like I said, if you're not at your hundred percent, your, if your battery is not 100% full, where are you going to get the energy to give to other people? And you are going to burn out if you do not take care of yourself first. Okay, I've been there, believe me, I've been there. Um, so the first thing, self-care. This is gonna look different for every single one of us, okay? You don't have to work out. That doesn't have to be your self-care method. Reading a book, taking a bath. I don't know, maybe you meditate. Maybe you need 20 minutes a day. Maybe you get up an hour early and drink your coffee on your porch. I love to do that, okay? We all have something that fuels us, okay? Ask yourself, if you don't know what that thing is, ask yourself this, what brings you joy? That's it. What brings you joy? And that's going to be something that's going to fill your cup up, okay? Because you're not going to be able to pour into others when your cup is empty, okay? So the other thing that is super, super important, okay? Rest is earned. Rest is earned. Okay. And the best way that I can explain this is you don't just go and work out and do one squat and you're like, oh, I need to rest. No, you're going to exert yourself until you're so tired that your heart's beating so fast. And that's a sign, hey, I need to rest. Okay. So when you lack of energy means you have worked hard. Okay, lack of energy equals hard ass freaking work. Okay, so rest is earned. And I think a lot of people need to hear that because, you know, I see people all the time saying I need to rest, but it's like, what are you, what are you doing though? You know, I, have, I don't see you putting anything into your business and you know, you might need rest with other parts of your life, but in regards to your business, like rest is earned, okay? So remember that um, if you're not taking care of yourself, you're going to, you're going to spiral out. You're going to burn out. And once you burn out, that's when all of a sudden you're looking back and you're like, Oh God, what happened to my business? Where did, you know, when did my teamies, where did it come from that they're about to out promote me? Y'all once they out promote you, I'm sorry. It's, it's going to be very hard to come back. And I, I'm looking at people now that are in my group that, you know, have director numbers. They don't even have their 500 PRV in and they can't even promote to director because they don't even have the three active front lines. And it's just a shame because if two, three, four months ago, if they would have actually like looked and seen what's happening in their business and saw that they had that one rock star that we always talk about, it's takes one person to change your entire business. One person, if she would have known, she would have seen the potential in this downline. She, she would be able to promote and she would be able to do amazing things and change the world and help her team and mentor all these people, okay? So you have to fill your cup up first, okay? Now, the other thing, if you are, give, if you are getting overwhelmed, one, you probably don't have a system in place. So I highly recommend you get systems in place. You don't have to have a million. I personally have a system for my customers. I have a system for my team, okay? Literally, you don't have to have a million. And if one doesn't work for you, there's so many different systems out there that might work for you. Just try them out and see which ones work best for you. Just because your sponsor does it, doesn't mean that you have to do the same exact one, okay? So if you are struggling, if you're getting overwhelmed, implement a system. Number two, work in increments. I realize that probably 90% of you up here, probably 99% of you up here work a full-time job. I get it. I worked as a full-time nurse for the first two years of my business, okay? Two and a half, actually, two and a half. Um, and 
I get it. You know, you're working full time. You have a family at home. You have all of these extracurricular stuff that you're doing outside of Scentsy, outside of your full time job. Just, you know, life happens. Work, work in increments. Okay. If you only have 10 minutes a day to work, be intentional with those 10 minutes. Okay. So take rest, come back and get going. Okay. Make a plan. You have to, if you want, if you want to make this business something, you have to be the one to decide, hey, I'm going to do this. Okay. Your sponsor's not going to be able to do it. Neither one of us here that are training you guys are going to be able to do it. Like you have to be the one to make up in your head. Hey, I'm doing this. Here's how I'm going to do it. And I'm giving it all I have. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is your energy. Okay. This is going to go into how your customers react to you, how your team reacts to you. It's also going to create an amazing culture for your team, for your group. But the energy you bring to the table is the energy you're going to get back. Okay. So if you are talking about a product, I don't know, if you're talking about our diffusers and you're like, oh my God, they're so expensive, you know, and you don't believe in the product, you don't believe in the price that Heidi and Orville have put these products at, why would your customers buy them? Okay. Same thing. Your energy, when you are training someone, if you're not excited about the business, why would they be excited about the business? If you're not excited about training them and getting them started and having their launch party, why would they be excited? Energy is contagious, y'all. You, you are going to become like the five most people you hang out with. So if you're hanging out with negative people, you're eventually gonna start seeing yourself being negative. But if you're hanging out with positive people, uplifting people, people who are happy, people who wanna change the world, people who want better, it's going to become you. You are going to become that, okay? You're gonna to start to see yourself. Oh, wow, this is such an amazing feeling, right? So you have to be excited, especially for your new people, especially for your new people. People are looking up to you. If you are going to recruit, you need to help them train, okay? You need to help them with, with their business. You need to help them get them started. And if you're not excited about that, why would they, why would they be excited themselves? So your energy is going to dictate their energy, okay? Negative is going to be negative. Poor work ethics breeds poor work ethics, okay? And I have seen this firsthand with some people in my group. When they don't show up, their team doesn't show up. But when they show up, their team shows up, okay? If you're not going to show up, your team's not going to show up. That's it. Your team's not going to show up. You have to be the one to make that first step. They are looking at you. If they think it's okay to take an entire week off because they see you taking an entire week off. But if they see you showing up, posting daily in your team page, going live on your stories, going live on your Facebook, you know, training them on even simple things, guys, mail outs. If you just did one mail out and all it was was a postcard and a sample, take a picture of it put it on your team page and then they're going to see, oh, Rachel just posted this mail out. Well, okay, I'm doing mail outs for my customers. I'm going to post a picture on the team page too. Okay. So if you are being inconsistent, your team's going to be inconsistent. Guys, they're watching you. They're going to follow your steps. You're basically, you're, you're their mentor. So they're looking up to you. They admire you. They admire what you are doing. So they're going to follow in your footsteps. That's basically what it is, okay? The energy you bring to the table is the energy they're gonna bring to the table, okay? So just like Chloe said, the culture is created. So if you're not gonna show up, the culture in your group is no one's gonna show up. If you want the culture to be, oh, everyone is you know, a go-getter and we're here for each other and we're gonna help each other and there's no, no negativity, you have to be the one to show them this is how it's done, okay? So basically, that's it. Um, consistent results is gonna be consistent revenue, okay? When you show up, if you're, in it, if you're in it to make money, like let's be real, most of us are in it to make money. Money's not everything, but money makes the world go around. I'm sorry, but it does. And um, we all need it. And if you're not being consistent, I'm sorry, but 
I'm sorry, but your paycheck's not going to be consistent. And it's going to suck big time when you see that your downline actually sees the potential in this business and then they jump over you and you no longer get paid off that person's team. Okay, so what you put into the universe, you will get out. Promise, I 100% believe that. You have to create the culture and it's going to start with you. It's going to start with your energy. It's going to start with you taking care of yourself first. Okay. I don't know if y'all see, but every day Chloe's on her bike every single morning before you see her do anything. Okay. Now that's obviously going to be up to y'all whenever is best for you to take care of yourself. Sometimes it might be at night. Me personally, I wake up in the morning, I drink my coffee, I come and sit at my computer and I work for about two to three hours. And then right around 11, 12 o'clock, I go and get my workout done and I take my dogs for a walk. And then I come back. So that's, that's up to y'all, but you have to take care of yourself and energy is gonna come from within, okay? And the thing is, let me, let me just make this clear. I might look like I wake up with like the Energizer Bunny stamped on my forehead, but no, you can ask my husband. Sometimes I am a raging bee, okay? So that's why I have to work out so I can gain my energy, okay? That's why it's so important for self-care because that's where your energy is going to come from. So that's, that's all I have to say. You have to show up, they will show up. Actually, prime example, I really, wanted to I really wanted to share this. You're showing up for not only your team, but your customers. I know this is about leadership, but you have to show up for your customers too. And I don't remember who posted this, but someone posted on the Guide to Growth Facebook page a couple of days ago, and I commented on it, and they posted a picture of an order, a PWS order that they had gotten, and it was like $200, right? And she had commented, this consultant had commented saying that, you know, she had sent like a little sample pack to this girl. So right there, that was her showing up for her customer. And in return, her customer showed up for her, okay? When you show up, they show up, both with your customers and your team, okay? Same thing, I sent, um, I sent a customer a package that cost me $6, literally, full of samples. Full of samples y'all since then which is about been about I would say a month ago she has probably spent six hundred dollars with me in one month not shitting you I'm trying to get her to join but that seven dollars okay when you show up they show up hands down that's all I have to say Get it, get it, get it. Hey, hey, you guys. I'm going to talk about recognition, team recognition, what that looks like for you, even in the, even in the beginning, even if you're, if you've just sponsored one person, how important recognition is. I'm probably really big on recognition with my team, my downline, all my entire group, because I'm a firm believer of you have the power to empower. You have the power to empower. So stop thinking that your director needs to be the one to shout out your sponsor, the person you sponsored for promoting or for getting active or whatever that looks like for your business. Even if you have one person under you, you have the power to empower and you have the power to change somebody's entire business and change somebody's entire life. And I'm going to try not to get emotional, but I'm going to say this because I don't even think Chloe really knows this. I joined under somebody, literally haven't joined from her since, and I worked my business from the get-go with not a lot of resources. I really didn't know what I was doing. I just learned quickly that parting is where I got my PRV from. And if I kept parting, I would gain a customer base. Um, but Chloe and Justin reached out to me and impacted my entire business, which in, impacted my entire life. I grew up not in the best circumstances. We didn't have the best of the best. There were times we went without food, without clothes, without lights because Chloe took time to mentor me and to coach me, she changed my entire life. 
not just my business, you changed my entire life. And I'm passionate about that because I don't think some of you guys get it that it's just not a number on your workstation when you've recruited somebody. It's not just about earning an incentive. It's not just about sponsoring three people so you can promote to the next level. It's a lot deeper than that. You have the power to change somebody's entire life. Had Chloe not mentored me and coached me and trained me, I wouldn't be with my son. I wouldn't have to live paycheck to paycheck. I would be able to take my kids on vacation, my child on vacation. I would be able to give my family the best life. So stop recruiting for a number. Start there and care about the people, not just the people you sponsor, but the people they sponsor. When you start caring about people and you put people first and you build people up, the promotion's gonna come, the paychecks, all those things are gonna come naturally. Just like with your customers, if you take care of your customers, your customers are gonna refer you. They're gonna party with you. They're gonna wanna join under you when you take care of people and you're in the people business. So I really want you to understand the day you sponsor somebody, their life is in your hands. Their sensi life is in your hands and you have the power to change somebody's entire life. So when you sponsor somebody, ask them what, what do they want out of this business? I asked my new recruit today, I said, what do you want out of this business? She said, I would love to stop living paycheck to paycheck. I would love to stop living paycheck to paycheck. You have the power to coach these people to get out of their circumstances. You have the power and it doesn't take money. I think people sometimes think recognition means sending gifts. Gifts are nice and all. The best recognition you can give somebody is a text message or a voice message saying, I love you. I see you. I'm thinking of you. Do you need anything? You don't have to have the answers. And I think as leaders, some of you guys don't want to lead because you think you have to have the answers to these people's questions and you don't. That's not what leading is. You don't have to have the answers. They don't have PRV, party, follow up, post on social media, email your customers. You don't have to have the answers, but you do, you do need to be there for your team. And the best form of leadership and the best thing you can do for your team is to show up. So my biggest pet peeve in any lead consultant, star consultant, superstar consultant, and director that goes weeks without posting on your team page. That's not okay. That's not okay. If you're a lead consultant and you sponsored somebody, the person you sponsored is looking at you. They're not looking at me. They don't have a relationship with me. They don't know me from Adam. They know you. So if you're not showing up, they think that's okay. And I'll tell you, in every single person in my group that's a rock star, when you show up, even when you don't feel like it, you go up. There is something about when you show up, it motivates you to go up. Do y'all think that all four of us want to be doing these trainings every single Wednesday for the last two months? When we like all of us, like Chloe's probably got 10,000 PRV. I have almost 7,500 PRV. We have customers and stuff to take care of. We show up even when we don't feel like. And at the end of the day, some of you guys, I'm going to get to the recognition part, I swear. Some of you guys are making permanent decisions for your business based on temporary feelings. You're always going to be tired. I have been tired for five years, like literally ever since the day I found out I was pregnant, I've been tired. <laughs> for real. I've been tired for five years. You're always, something's always going to happen in your life. And at the end of the day, your team does not care what's going on in your life because something is always going to be going in, on in your life. That's life. That's life. But at the end of the day, you have to show up. You have to show up. And when people show up, it builds momentum. So if you're a lead consultant or above, when's the last time you posted on your director's team page? And I'm not talking about a novel. 
I'm talking about you package up an order and take a picture of it and post it on your team page. Those are the things your team wants from you. Not answers. They want to see that they're in it, that you're in it with them. My, um, I was a nurse for a very long time in a doctor's office. And I was a supervisor in that doctor's office. And I supervised four nurses. We were always short staffed, like literally always. And every time we were short staffed, I would leave my manager position to work the floor to see patients because patient care comes first. And my girls never gave me a hard time and other offices would complain at, at meetings like none of my nurses respect me, do this, this and the other. My nurses never ever did that to me. And I asked them one day and I was like, y'all are so good. Y'all never give me a hard time. And they said, because you're willing to get in the trenches with us. We don't feel alone. You're not going to let us drown. And at the end of the day, your team needs to know that you're doing the things that they're doing that they're not doing it alone. They need you to show up with them. They need you to be in the trenches with them. They need to see you partying. They need to see you recruiting. They need to see you doing the things with them. Otherwise you're leading in vain. You're leading in vain. If you get on your team page and talk about recruiting and partying and all those stuff, you're leading in vain. Don't do that. Please don't do that. So recognition, Recognize the things you want to see repeated. If you have people that are showing up on your team page, you can pull up, they're in the Google Drive that will be posted after this call, you can pull up who's most active on your team page. Those are the people you wanna work with. Those are the people you wanna focus on, the ones that are showing up. Banners on your team page, if you have, ban if you have your own team page, you can create a banner every single month. I switch it up sometimes. Sometimes I put top sponsors. Sometimes I post post um, people, top contributors, top PRV, people that promote it. I switch it up. Emails, you can do emails straight from your workstation. It costs you nothing and takes literally two seconds of your time. Two seconds of your time. Whatever form of recognition you decide to do for your team, even if you only have a team of one, be consistent with it. Be consistent with it. Um, emails, shout, you, shout your team out. Track them from the beginning. Track them from the time that you sponsor them. Shooting star, certified. Watch them. People thrive, people thrive off of recognition. Make sure you're careful, though. That what you do for one, you can do when you have a team of a of 100, of 200, 300, 400, and 500, because there has to be a balance with recognition. You don't want people to rely on recognition to work their business. Those are temporary feelings, seeing your names in bold. And I see this, people get this like high on the inside of them when they see their name in bold on Facebook. And woo, yeah, I got shouted out. And then if they don't get shouted out, they're feeling some type of way. So there needs to be balance with it and there needs to be a system. I do emails once a month on the 15th to my team and to my group. And I do top sponsor stuff. So remember, whatever you're going to do, make sure that you're consistent with it. You can do fun mail. I do postcards. They cost one stamp. I do corny jokes. I love puns. So I do a lot of things that involve a pun because I just love puns so much. Keep it cheap. Remember, like, don't expect, if, it's a double-edged sword too, so I want to make sure that I'm very, very clear. You don't want to overdo recognizing either because at the end of the day, you want your teams to want your job. So if you're spending your whole entire day on your team page shouting out whatever, shouting out over and over and over again, your team's going to look at you and they're going to say, there's no way in hell I can do all that. There's just no way I can do all that. There has to be a balance and there has to be a system because you want um, it to be duplicatable. So I have a system for that. I have a system on how I work with my team. I use Ray Ray's system on how I work with my team. And I'm very consistent with that. Um, text messaging and voice messaging. As you start growing your team, save their numbers into your phone. Voice messaging is the easiest form of recognition. 
and it's behind the scenes. And let me tell you that I used to be one that shouted out everything on my team page and I stopped and I started doing voice messaging. And the goal in that is you can build a relationship off of your team page behind the scenes that they start trusting you and building a relationship one-on-one. -on -one. Same with your customers. My customers love voice messaging. You're building a relationship off of a team page. Because at the end of the day, Facebook can be deleted like that. I mean, just like that. Build your relationships off of your team page, but be consistent with it. Whatever you do for your team, I want you to imagine, could you do it if you had a team of 100, 200, 300, 400, 500? And I say this with love, but it's something to think about. This time last year, I had a team of 248, and I'm almost at a group or a group of 248, and I'm almost at a group of 1,000. It can go that fast. And at the end of the day, you don't want to kill yourself for your team either. Because your, your business has to come first. Your family needs to come first, your business, and then your team. So don't kill yourself for your team. Figure out what works for you. Some people like digital stuff. You can do postcards. I do postcards. I like writing notes. Those, that's my love language. So I like giving love language. Um, do what works for you as far as recognition, but stop relying on your director to do it all. If you're a lead consultant, that means you have somebody underneath of you. You need to be recognizing them. And if you're in my group, you'll see this. If their sponsor hasn't shouted them out for, pro for promoting, I'm going to shout them out and I'm going to tag their sponsor in it. And I don't care if it steps on toes. If you win a whole month and you're one team, you have one team, one person on your team and you didn't realize that they promoted that's the issue that's the issue and i'm gonna tag them in it i'm gonna say i know your sponsor such and such is real proud of you for promoting and i don't care i don't care because at the end of the day you need to be keeping up with your people you need to be looking at your people stop thinking of them as a number and start thinking of them as people and how can you impact those people you have the power to empower and i don't want you to take that lightly whether you're a lead consultant star director you have the power to change somebody's life and that could be as easy as a voice message or a text message chloe changed my life because of a text message stop taking it lightly it's not if you send some if you spent time having a join conversation with somebody and sent them your link to sponsor them, you have time to send them a, a text message saying congratulations on hitting shooting star. The effort that you're taking to sponsor can go away just like that. It doesn't matter if you sponsor 10 people. All 10 of them can go inactive in four months. If you didn't train them, if you didn't do anything for them, they can all, all 10 of them go inactive in, ten, in four months. So do for your team like you would want to be done for and stop thinking of it as a number. Think of it as these are people. These are people's lives and you can change somebody's entire life. And when that happens, when, I promise you this, when you find that one team member and you change their entire life, something in your business is going to shift and you're going to realize you're exactly where you need to be. When you change, then it becomes not about, my life is forever changed. But nothing makes me in my feels than to watch my team's lives change. It's a whole different type of feeling. And when that happens for you, when you find that one person in this business changes their life, it's going to change everything for you. And you're going to want to change all the people's lives. So don't take it for granted. Leadership is a servanthood. It's a servant herd. Serve your teams well. Serve the people that you sponsor well. Serve them well. It always comes back tenfold. But at the end of the day, like Chloe said, it's not about you. It has nothing to do with you. Think about how can you serve them well so that their lives can be forever changed because of this business. It's for real. It's for real. It's for real. I remember, Chloe, I remember the first time I hugged Chloe was at my very first reunion. My very, very first, I think this was all my stuff, is it? Yeah, events. My very first event that I went to was in Kansas City. It's my very first reunion. It was the very first time I ever left my son. I never left my son before overnight. 
my flight got canceled and I had to spend the night in at the airport and I knew nobody. I roomed with four complete strangers, y'all. My husband made me go because I wanted this to work and I was a star cons I was a star cons I had just promoted to star consultant, went to my first reunion and I knew nobody. Slept in the airport that night, arrived like on day two of reunion. I was scared to death. And I went into reunion and I met Chloe for the first time and she hugged me. She's like, there's just something special about you. And I sat there and I looked around. I wish I could like really paint the picture for y'all. I looked around at this room and I'm like, these people have it together. They have it going on. Like I'm a mess. I miss my baby. I'm dirty. I hadn't had a bath in two days because I spent the night at the airport. I'm rooming with complete strangers. I was scared to death. And something in me going to this event changed everything for me it literally changed everything for me and I say that because it had nothing to do with the products it had nothing to do with Scentsy it had to do with my life going to reunion changed my entire life when I came home I double promoted to October up uh, to October to um director in a month in a month I, because I came home and I told my husband, I said, I, I, you know, I think I can do this. I really think I can do it. And he said, I know you can do it. Why don't you think you can do it? Reunion is life changing. Events is life changing. I wouldn't have met any of these people that I, Faith, see Faith, but I would have never met any of these people had I not gone to events. And when you start going to events, you realize that this is bigger than you that this is bigger than your team, that this is bigger. And if you ever get the chance to hear Orville and Heidi speak, it will change your life. Stop saying you can't afford to go. Y'all, we know about reunion a, a year in advance. You can afford to go. You can afford to go room with people. If you can't go to reunion, go to the farm event. If you can't go to the farm event, do your team meetings. At the end of the day, when you feel like you're a part of something, when you build a community with your team and you build relationships with your team, you're building something people don't want to leave. And when you, when you build these relationships with your team that's outside of Sensei, that you build these actual friendships and actual relationships, they're not gonna wanna leave. It doesn't matter if they have a bad month or a bad six months, they're not gonna wanna leave because of the community. So stop saying you can't afford it. Stop saying it's too far away. Stop, y'all can do, and you can earn a reunion for free if you work your butt off for the incentive. You can earn it for free. You can absolutely um, earn reunion for free, but it's affordable. It's affordable. You can do a monthly thing on it when, it's, when registration opens. And you can room with people and save on hotel and get your plane ticket. You can do it. But at the end of the day, you have to decide, do you want it? And my decision for going to reunion was, there's no way out of my current circumstance. Financially, I could not leave nursing. So I could either leave the job I was at just to go nurse somewhere else, or I could work my business as hard as I could to leave nursing all, the, all together to be home with my son. And at the end of the day, some of you guys need to dig down deep and say, why are you doing this? What is your biggest dream? And stop limiting your dreams and thinking you're not good enough, you're not worthy enough, or you can never do this because you absolutely can. Stop selling yourself short and stop doing the bare minimum. Stop being minimalistic. You're minimalistic, you're going to get minimalistic results. And it astonishes me when people get to the end of the month and they're like, I don't think I'm going to get active this month. Or they start the month and they're like, I don't think this is going to be a good month. Your month is what you make it. Your month, your people kill me when they, when they speak negativity over their business on the first day of the month. I don't think I'm going to recruit nobody this month. I don't think I'm going to get at it this month. I don't think I'm going to do this. I can't book no parties and it's the first day of the month. Like, y'all, y'all have 30, 31 days in a month. You can change your whole business in a day. Literally, you can change your whole entire business in a day. But at the end of the day, you have to decide that you want it. Your month shouldn't be a surprise to you. Your month, if, if look, tomorrow's the last day of the month. It should not be a surprise if you don't have $200 PRBN. 
that shouldn't be a surprise to you. It shouldn't be a surprise if you haven't sponsored anybody, if you haven't had any sponsoring conversations. None of this should be a surprise to you. So stop limiting yourself and stop saying you're going to do the bare minimum. Every time you choose to do the bare minimum in your business, you're limiting your dreams. You're limiting your potential. You're hurting yourself. And some of you guys need to dream bigger than you're dreaming. You're not dreaming big enough. You're not dreaming big enough. Oh, I'm going to get active. So my account will stay active. Okay. There's real money to being made in this business. And I was, I only wanted to make two to $300 extra a month. Then when I saw what happened when I hit my first $2,000 paycheck and it was $600 and I was like, wow, this is like going to pay three bills for us. This is big. You can change your entire life because of this business. You can change your entire business, but stop. You're not going to do it if you have a minimalistic mindset. Point blank period. If your dreams, when you get up every morning and you think about your biggest dreams, you almost need to say to yourself, that's never possible. That's how big your dreams need to be. Your dreams need to be so big that even you don't believe that it's possible. That's how big they need to be. And if it's not that big, then you really need to dig down deep and figure out what you want out of this business. I'm telling y'all, they need to scare you. My goals are written down where I can see them every single day. And they need to be, you need to be able to look at them and say that. I don't think that'll ever happen. That's how big they need to be. And if they're not that big, you really need to dig down deep. You need to dig down deep. For real, for real. I think that's it. I think I went really long. Sorry. Sorry, I got real, real emotional. Well, just going to say, hey, all you cool cats and kittens. I hope that's not too old yet, but I just had to because I don't even know what else to say after having to go after these three boss babes. Did not kill my husband. However, I might piss some people off tonight. I'm just going to go ahead and say that because I got some real things that I got to say to you guys, but I took, I've been taking notes. I hope you guys have been taking notes. And I mean, I've got my outline here of things I'm going to say, but I'm really go with my heart tonight, guys, because this is the end of our program. And we have seen, oh Jesus, so much growth within you guys, but we've also seen so much complacency with people who are not even trying to do this program with us. And I'm just looking around at the walls like I'm very confused because I'm going to be honest with you guys, right? So all three of these ladies have talked about how you got to put yourself first. And the very first thing I did this morning was I did my gratitude journal I turned my phone on do not disturb for the entire day, literally flipped my phone over at one point and had like 156 text messages, not just from the group, but from team members, from my principal, from everybody. And I'm like, bye, today is a chastity day and I'm going to be selfish and I'm going to teach my kids the way I need to, but everybody else can sit their asses down because I have things to do. Okay. So you are not going to get where you want to be by not taking care of you. And I knew I had this program to do this week and I have planned my week to where I did my notes. I uploaded the things into the Google drive. I did all the things I needed to do before today because I knew I had so much crazy going on. And, you know, I did feel guilty when I turned my phone over and I saw all of these text messages, but then I had to remind myself, Remember who the hell you are, Chastity. You're nobody if you don't take care of you, if you don't take care of your mental health. So I literally turned my phone on do not disturb and left it outside of my office. I spent all morning scheduling posts for a Facebook party that I don't wanna have, but I'm gonna go and schedule them so then that work is done. And I didn't do anything for anybody else because I had to take care of me. 
So that is the first thing that I want you guys to realize. And if you don't already follow me on Facebook, go read the article I shared right before this call about setting healthy boundaries, because if you don't have boundaries, you are going to drown in this business, period. If you haven't felt that way already, you will feel that way because your team is going to take and take and take and take and take and pretend like you're freaking Google until you're blue in the face. And I am a people pleaser and a perfectionist by nature. Type A, I want to do all the things and reach all the goals and be the best. But we can't be everything to everyone and we've got to be okay with it. And it is very, very hard for me to see a text message or a message from somebody and not respond right away, even when I know I've set that boundary and I've said I need to wait. That's something that's very, very hard for me. So, and I've been drowning all week. And these girls know that. Like with teaching and teaching my kid and everything else, I am literally drowning. There is never going to be a time where I have everything knocked off my to-do list until it's summer because of my full-time job. But don't you dare ask somebody if they come at me and tell me that they don't have time to work their Scentsy business because they're working from home. I'm sorry, but I literally do not feel bad because you may have it hard. I get it. And I am not devaluing that, but I also, but I have over 5,000 PRV this month and I have never had over, I have never had 5,000 PRV. Never. I've sponsored three people this month. It's April. This ain't the fall. So don't you dare say that you're too busy to work your Scentsy business because guess what? Most of it, just like Ray Ray said, most of us are still working full time. I'm still working full time. So don't you come at me with that bullshit. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it because I will cut you because I've got two kids, a husband that's never home. I'm homeschooling and teaching a class where there's kids like being crazy on voice chat. And I'm having to like discipline kids on virtual teaching. It's a situation. Like literally kids I taught five years ago are popping into my voice chat asking me if I eat biscuits for breakfast. So please do not tell me that you don't have time to work your business because I about lost it. You have to make time for the things that are important to you, period. Your nine to five is gonna pay the bills. Your five to midnight is gonna build your dreams. And every single one of them have done that. That's why they've walked away. And your girl will be there soon too. I just haven't left, not because I can't, but because God hasn't told me that it's time yet. And when God tells me that it's time, I'm going to say deuces and never look back because I pray about that daily, but I cannot sleep on this business because teaching is crazy because I do this for my family. So don't you dare use your nine to five and your family as an excuse to not work your business right now. Okay. That is why my phone went on do not disturb today and I ignored Faith's FaceTime, which was probably just singing to me. And I ignored a hundred text messages from everybody else. Like, love y'all, mean it, I'll get back to you. No excuses. So this is how I function working full time. Okay, I still work full time. I have two kids, my husband's never home. I schedule my posts. Now, when I'm scheduling my posts, I'm sure it was singing, Faith. Yes, exactly. When I'm scheduling my post, I am scheduling things that matter. And when I say I'm scheduling things that matter, I'm scheduling things such as booking parties, sponsoring conversations, follow up Friday, um, and the hashtag how I am working. I am not scheduling some BS that doesn't matter. If that happens, if I see something that I'm like, okay, well, the team probably could use that. I might just post that right away when I'm scrolling aimlessly. But I am going to post intentional content every single day. 
I'm not wake, but, and this is the thing I learned this about a year ago and I'd wake up every morning in a frantic, like, oh my gosh, I need to say something to my team. You need to be active on your team page, but you don't need to live and die by your team page. I literally take 30 minutes. If that, if it's taking me any longer than 30 minutes, there's clearly a problem. I take 30 minutes at some point during my week. It used to be Sundays, but Sundays don't work for me anymore because that's the day I really want to rest. So it may be Monday afternoons and I'm going to schedule the next whole week worth of content. So that may be why you see Chastity posting something at 7 a.m., but she didn't make her bed till 930 because your girl's working smarter, not harder. And I'm not going to wake up and be a victim to my phone. That's also a boundary that I've set. I don't allow myself to get on social media until after 11 o'clock every day. Why? Because I was waking up every day feeling behind and overwhelmed and not taking care of the three things that I said I needed to do for the day. Because when we go to bed, we're literally like, okay, I'm going to wake up tomorrow. I'm going to knock these things out. I'm going to be productive. But you wake up and you've got 5,000 emails and you've got messages from customers and you've got text messages that you need to deal with. I don't even allow myself to do it anymore. I used to wake up in the morning and check my email while I'm waking up. I don't allow myself to do it. And it's a habit that's very hard to break. I even catch myself clicking on social media if I'm getting on my phone to do something else. I catch myself doing that before 11. And it's literally like I need somebody to slap my hand. But I'm still able to give to my team because I scheduled those posts. That's me working smarter because I do need to show up for those people that need that morning reminder from me, that Monday motivation or Tuesday's team day or freebie Friday. Theme your days. If you don't know what to post, theme them. If you don't know how to save posts on Facebook, Google it because that's what I do. I may see one of these girls post something that they're doing right then, and I'm not gonna take it right then and post it right away because I've got a life to live. To live. I'm gonna click save and I'm gonna be done with it. And when it's my day to schedule my post, that's when I'm gonna go and schedule my post. But if you are not showing up, you are the problem. And I'm gonna say that again, because your team is looking at you. Your customers are looking at you. And it's to the point now where I literally have to write down on my top three, post on social media. Yes, I have to write that down right now because I'm so overwhelmed. And I don't just mean about, about Scentsy because you can't just only post about Scentsy. But if I need to write down that I need to go and post on social every day, that's what I need to do. Because if you're not being consistent, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do once, it matters what you do consistently because consistently compounds. And the more you do things consistently, the more people are going to pay attention to it. To it. I turned off all notifications for everything. At the end of every night, I go through and I scroll the pages that I need to pay attention to and I go and comment. If that's what you need to do, then do it. But you need to make a commitment to that. If you are a lead consultant or above, you should be going to your director's team page and commenting on welcomes and congratulations every single day. It is effing ridiculous. And I'm going to say it again. It is effing ridiculous for us to have 400 people on a team page and three people welcome somebody. I'm going to tell you what, that team page ain't for me. It ain't for Chloe. It ain't for Katie. It ain't for Ray Ray. We will delete it tomorrow. Bye. Then what are you going to do? But I want you to remember what it felt like when you post something and nobody responds. I want you to remember what it feels like when you're getting congratulated and somebody doesn't say anything, but they've seen it. Because guess what, homies? We can see who's seen our posts. Newsflash. And I get that sometimes people are like busy. They may be just scrolling at lunch. Fine. Make a commitment to go back at the end of the day and comment, period. Don't make excuses and show the hell up for your people because these people that are not commenting are gonna be the exact same ones who are complaining when their new teamie didn't get a welcome. 
And it is not any of our jobs to be the only one. And I had to let my leaders have it the other day because it is not okay that I have 400 people on my team page and I had two people welcome somebody. Not okay. And you need to realize that. If you can't contribute to your team page, you can be taken off. That is a privilege. It is not a right. Since he nowhere says that we have to have a team page. Cause some drama, be negative. Bye. You'll be deleted. We don't do that around here. So just remember that your team is watching you because I'm going to be honest, I may have some lead and star consultants that never welcome people and their team sees that they're not doing it and that's why they don't do it. If you think that that doesn't matter, it does. Even if it's not a conscious decision, your people are scrolling that page and they're like, well, I saw Chastity comment, but my sponsor didn't. Maybe I'm not supposed to post. You have to be the pace setter. And I get it that it gets frustrating when you may post something and nobody does not and nobody comments on it or going to do it who is don't let so it's really kind of like crazy we heard gunshots the other night where we're at and like we live in the country so I mean that's not like crazy but Chase didn't want to call it in and I'm like call it in like what are we doing and he's like oh somebody else will call it in and I said that's the problem with the world everybody else thinks somebody else is going to do something and you need to be the one you need to be the one to set the example for everybody. Don't wait on somebody else and be like, oh, I saw that question. I saw that question, but I'm not gonna answer it because somebody else will get to it. Bye. Like we're not doing that. And yes, us as SSDs, sometimes we do see those questions that we don't answer because our leaders need to step it up. You need to step it up, period. Okay, so that's a whole nother thing. If you have your own team page, I don't care how busy you are. You have enough time. It is the fa the Fayetteville's about to come out because I'm about to say some more things people are going to be pissed off about. Um, every day you need to be posting. My go-to is I post something useful in the morning, something about like positivity. And at night, we usually post some engagement things because if you are not engaging and getting to know your team, they don't care about you. And if you think that we don't realize who's looking at our posts and not commenting, we do. And if you think that we don't realize who all is on this team page and on this call live, and if you think that we don't see the people that say, well, I'm just gonna catch the recording, we see you, we see it. And we see your team numbers and we see the reflection of that. And I'm not saying that to be ugly, I'm saying it because it's real life and that's data. That is data. Okay, another thing I'm going to preach on, and I know that the other girls have already said something about it. Why aren't we sharing? Why are we having to reach out to you because I saw something on your story and you didn't share it? Number one, that's annoying. Number one, number two, that's not income producing. Number three, that's selfish. Why aren't you sharing? Because the four of us, there is not a dang thing that we do that we don't share with y'all. And we don't share it for the recognition or for you guys to be like, oh my gosh, you guys are so great. We share it because we want you to rise and we want you to change your lives and we want you to do all the things. So I don't care if it's a freaking sample card, if it's a freaking label, you just saved me 10 minutes because you posted the label that you made. Now I don't have to go make it. I can go print it. Please, for the love of God, stop making us ask you to share things. Because it's important. You could post something that can change someone's entire life. And like Katie said, if you don't believe that, you need to pray about it and really see where you're at. Because if you don't think this business can change your life, you're in the wrong place right now. 
I have had full body chills this entire call. My phone was still accidentally on do not disturb. And when this phone first call first, uh, or when this call first started, I listened to these three pray over us because that's who we are. And we pray over you guys in this business. And I know that there are probably a lot of women listening to this right now that have self doubt that they're thinking they would never want to use what I post. They would never want to do what I'm doing. That idea that I'm, that I'm doing for my customers, they're going to think that's stupid or whatever. I know what having low self-esteem is. I know what having self-doubt is. I was in a relationship where I felt this big. I had a zero self-worth. I had zero self-confidence. The people that knew me back then wouldn't even recognize me then, recognize me now because of the woman that I am today. And it's because of Scentsy. And if you don't feel value, this is your place. This is your place in the world. Because no man, and I know I'm speaking, I know there's men on here too, but no man can ever make you feel the value that this business and these women have made me feel. And I don't want to get all up in my feels, but these people and this stuff is why I am who I am, not because of anything else. So just realize that you have value that you can bring to us and that you can change someone's life and stop doubting yourself because that is the biggest thing that is going to hold you back is self-doubt. And I made a post earlier this, this week about staying in the same place. You're not going to grow if you don't get out of your comfort zone and who gives a damn if somebody doesn't like your idea. I may love it. Chloe may love it. There's things that I, that Chloe does that I don't do and vice versa. Share it. Okay. Now showing up for your business every single day, Jesus, do not let a temporary feeling affect your five-year dreams. Thank God. Chloe told me that this past year. And if I had anything that I could do, that I could go back and do different in my business, it would have been getting an accountability partner sooner. An accountability partner doesn't have to be some awkward, weird conversation. When Chloe and I first started holding each other accountable, number one, we're both awkward as hell. So, I mean, that, I don't really even know. Someone says, oh, thank you. And I'm like, oh, happy birthday. I mean, that's just who we are as people. And when we first started holding each other accountable, it was a little awkward at first because we really didn't know each other as well. I didn't like her in high school because I was a crazy person because my ex-husband made me that way and I was super insecure. And it literally just started off with her texting me, this is what I'm going to do today. And I would text her back, okay, this is what I'm going to do today. And it would be like random conversations. Okay, I just had five sponsoring conversations. This girl's about to join, blah, blah, blah. It didn't have to be something, oh, what's your name? We're not dating. Like, and that's what it sort of like seems like. But you've got to show up every single day and you've got to figure out what's going to make you show up every single day. Because these three right here make me show up on days that I want to quit. And if you haven't found that person for you in Cincy yet, you will keep praying, keep looking and look outside of your group. Look outside of your team. It's not going to be, it mo it's not going to be somebody that's in your downline for the most part. It's going to be somebody else. Like I know Anna Watson talks to, she's one of my directors. She talks to Michelle Hall a lot. She talks to some other directors because it's just different. And you've got to find somebody that's going to pull you out of your funk and say, put your big girl panties on. You've had your minute, put your head down and let's get to work to show up every single day because those are the days that it matters. Um, and so right now with me having to work pretty much two full-time jobs, I feel like with homeschooling and teaching, that's not including Scentsy. I focus on three income producing things every single day. You guys heard me talk about this last week. Last week when I got on the call, I had none of my income producing things done yet because my school day went crazy. But what I did without making excuses was I got those three things done. 
So what I do every single night, guys, every night I do this, I have tried different systems and you've got to find something that works for you because right now I have appointments with freaking seven year olds. I have to write out what times I'm meeting with kids. I haven't done it yet because my brain's not ready. After we get off this call, I'm going to write down what times I have to meet with students and I have a staff meeting, et cetera. And over here, those are my three income producing things that are going to happen. I think I already threw my Wednesday one away. Or, but from um, Tuesday, my three income producing things that I needed to do was get all of my notes for Guide to Growth. I needed to finish up my, um, I did recognition for my team. And I got my bag parties together because I have some that I have to deliver tomorrow on my delivery day. And yes, I have all of these other things listed over to the side that I needed to get done. But your girl just transfers them over because guys, life happens. But if you decide to take a break and not do something because you had a bad day, it's going to be so much easier the very next day to do the same thing and so much easier the next day to do the same thing. And you just, if you can find the time, just like Ray Ray said, none of us have hours to sit down and work our business. We work in spurts. If you have the time to do a power hour, which I have always talked about, it's 15 minute spurts. If you have four 15 minute spurts, you've worked your business effectively. And anything else that's taking more than 15 minutes is probably not income producing. I know sample bulk sampling is gonna take more than 15 minutes. But booking parties and having sponsoring conversations and doing some quick recognition shouldn't take more than 15 minutes. Those other things need to be put on days that you have extra time. I'm not going to put on here that I need to bulk sample tomorrow when I have four hour long meetings during my work day. And that is why planning your week is so important. And I also have like a little week planner. You have to do what works for you. And I have to brain dump like this because if I don't, I'm literally so overwhelmed. It just makes me frozen. And the whole reason why I even know what I'm doing is because I have systems in place. Just like what Katie said, I have this checklist and it may seem so stupid to have to write down voice text 10 frontline or downline in week two of my business. But if I don't write it down, I'm gonna get so busy doing all of the other things that I'm gonna leave those things on the back burner. And those are the things that really matter because we're building relationships with those people. And I found that that's exactly what I was doing. I was doing all the things for my personal business, but I wasn't building connections with my people because I was so busy. And those were the things that left, got left on the back burner. So I now have a checklist for what I'm doing during those weeks. So I know by the time week two of this month is done, I need to have made sure that I have held myself accountable. And you need to do what works for you. And yeah, somebody said checking off um, makes people feel like rewarding. If you're type A like me, you're going to feel rewarded. If you're not like Felicia and Faith and my one of my directors Anna they can't function like this this makes them just want to die and that's okay you have to find things that work for you but like Katie said you have to do it consistently and the only way to do it consistently is to have a system to do it because if you shout somebody out but then you don't shout anybody out for the next two months it doesn't matter and I know that seems like rude, but it's not rude. It's serious. Nobody cares what you do once. It matters what you do consistently. Okay. So show up every day to be income producing. A few things that I wanted to talk about that I just kind of took notes on real quick. Um, your goals. Katie talked about goals. This is a big mistake that I made in my business. And it actually really resonated with me because I had one of my directors actually say this to me last week. Number one, you need to start every single month like you're trying to hit shooting star. Every single month like you're trying to hit shooting star if you want to be a leader. And I'm going to get into if you don't want to be a leader here in a second. And this is really going to be like, I don't even know how to make a cat noise, but there's that. Um, I guess I should if I'm going to be Carol Baskin. But every month you need to start off 
like you're going to hit shooting star because every single one of us start back off at zero zero active front line, zero GWV, et cetera. We have to work every single month for everything that we have. And if you start every single month off like you have to hit shooting star, you're gonna be successful. But we don't get there by saying, well, it's the first of the month. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how I'm gonna get my 500. I'm gonna be honest, the four of us usually have our 500 in by the seventh, if not like on the first, because we have front loaded, we have worked hard, et cetera but your goals. Please do not set a goal to just hit director because what's gonna happen is you're gonna have nowhere to go from there. You're gonna hit director and you're gonna be like, oh, I made it. And you're not gonna go any farther because you're gonna feel like, oh, I hit my goal, now what? And I really, and that's exactly what, and exactly Whitney, you were just getting started when you hit director. You may hit superstar director and you're like, oh, I made it. No, this is when the real work begins. This is when it's really about changing some lives and you really have stewardship and you're really making an impact. And if you just set your goal to hit a certain title, you're not going to have anything to work for after you hit that. And my director literally said that to me. She said, my goals weren't big enough. My goal with Cincy was to pay off these credit cards. And I paid off these credit cards. And I just was kind of like flying by the seat of my pants. I accidentally hit director. And I've just been kind of like flying, doing whatever, because I'd met my goals. We didn't need my Cincy money anymore because we had met the financial goals that we were setting to make. And she's told me that through this program and through all of us staying so consistent, she changed her goals to be something that is never, it's not going to be something that it's just like hit and miss. My goal right now, guys, is to make $10,000 a month consistently. And that's going to take some work to get to. And I have a vision board that I have to look at every single day. And just like Katie said, if your goals don't scare the hell out of you, they're not big enough. And if you are focusing so much on hitting director, you're never going to get there because you're always going to be worrying about numbers and not worrying about people and not worrying about being an extraordinary star director. That's where I was when Jason Harwood said that at um, Star Director Summit Approach. He said, focus on being an extraordinary star director and the promotion will come. And that literally hit me like a ton of bricks because when I went to Star Director Summit Approach, I was feeling real salty because I hadn't promoted to Superstar Director the fall before. But it was nobody's fault but mine because it was work that I didn't put in. And I was focusing so hard on me getting there that I wasn't focusing on the people. And that's what leaders do. Leaders self-reflect. Now, just go ahead and pull your big girl panties up because I'm about to say something that's going to probably piss some people off. And God just led me here. If you are on this call and you do not want to lead people or have people come to you with questions, or if you want to grow your business only for money, not because you want to just help people be successful in life, you need to stop sponsoring. If you just want to be a certified consultant, every single one of us are okay with that. Nobody is going to be mad at you if you don't want to lead. It's okay. But you have to ask yourself, am I willing to do the hard things and give to people? Or do I just want to be by myself? And that is nothing to be ashamed of. You can be certified and every single one of us are gonna be happy for you regardless. But if you are sponsoring people and you have zero intention of leading them, you need to take a non-sponsoring role. If you are a lead star superstar if you're a director and you don't have any reason or want to lead somebody 
email account services at cincy.com tonight and tell them you want to take a non-leadership role because that is not fair to those of us that want to lead these people for you to just sit there and not give them what they deserve because somebody may join your team that's a rock star like katie joined somebody's team and never heard from her again it's not okay to do that it's not okay for all of us to be reaching down to your downline and be training your people because you don't have time it's not okay and you need to take a non-sponsoring role and that's okay nobody's going to be mad at you but people are going to be salty with you and we are going to be some type of way if you're not taking care of your team because that is your job as a leader that is your job as a leader and if you don't feel like you can sponsor take a non-leadership role or if someone comes to you and they want to join your team and you don't want them and you don't want that refer them to someone who is leading because don't do that to somebody don't take someone else's opportunity away when this could change their life and i've had to have that conversation about taking a non-leadership role and people have gotten upset and i know that we've had these conversations here recently it's not because of money it's not because we don't want to train these people we do but that's your responsibility and that is your stewardship and you need to realize that you don't have to sponsor if you don't want to sponsor and if one day you wake up and you say you know what this is too much i don't want to lead anymore i just want to be a certified consultant and buy from myself that's okay and i can promise you that chloe katie ray ray and i we're gonna thank you for doing that. And your team members are going to thank you for doing that because then they're going to get the things that they want if they're wanting something big out of this business. And that's exactly why Katie said that she asked her new team member what she wanted out of this business. Because if she just wanted to be a hobbyist, but then Katie sees her sponsoring five people, Katie's going to have a conversation with her about, well, what's going on? Do you really want to be a hobbyist? Like, why are, the, why are you having these people join, et cetera? Because it's okay to not want to be a leader. Leadership is the hard, leadership in this is the hardest thing I've ever done. And I believe it'll be the hardest thing I've ever done. So just realize that it's okay to not want to lead and you don't have to. But if you are a leader, you need to train your people and you need to do the right thing or take a non-leadership role. Love you, mean it, take care of you first. You can't pour from an empty cup. And as you are going to go into leadership, people are gonna take from you and take from you and take from you until there's nothing left to take. And don't let it happen because you were made for more. I'm done legit fire like i don't even know what to say after hearing all three of them y'all listen listen to me and y'all know when i say listen to me if you've ever heard my stories or anything that means it's going to get real listen to me we have to be honest with ourselves and a lot of you guys you're not being honest with yourself and you're you have a choice you understand that right you have a choice you're not stuck you're not forced to be a leader you're not forced to decide that you want to work this as a business but if you choose to be a leader and if you choose to work this business you for damn sure need to put your crown on and you need to figure it out and you need to watch the trainings we have given you and you need to lead your teams because i'm going to be honest i texted someone that promoted the other day on my team and one of the things she said to me was I didn't have a sponsor. I wasn't her sponsor. She wrote up to me, but she said, I didn't have a sponsor that trained me. I had to figure it out. And I thought to myself, you really had to figure it out. You had to figure it out. Explain it to me because 
you've gotten every piece of everything I have on my team page. You've gotten every piece of everything all of us have. So I think that you guys need to be honest with yourself and you need to make a decision and you need to say, I'm going to lead and I'm going to do what I know I can do because not because you don't have this, you know, nothing about not having anything. I can tell you that right now. Y'all know nothing about not having things to be successful. All four of us have created it. So no more of this. I don't know. It's just not true. It's not true. You know, but will versus skill is evident. And my husband taught me that, my dad taught me that. Do you just not have the will to wanna do it? And back to Katie, the will comes from the drive, the passion. I miss my son's first three years of life. Chastity has missed both of her kids growing up, both of them. Her will is to be home so she can be present. I've not missed a second of my daughter's life, a second of it. Everything I know. I don't even remember when my son crawled. I don't remember when he walked. I don't remember any of it. My will comes from that. Your skill is going to be like Chastity said. Do you have it or do you not have it? If you don't want to lead, if you don't want to lead, quit making excuses. You're killing yourself. You're killing your home. You're killing your mindset. It's not that you don't have this. It's that you don't have it. And listen to me, I'm trying to help you. You have to make a decision and you have to quit saying you don't have this, you don't have that. Y'all have more than anybody in Cincy Worldwide has. I can vouch for that and I know that. So I'm done. I'm gonna let if they, if they need to say anything, they can say anything, but I want you guys to really let everything that was said tonight resonate. We don't want you to not lead if, if you are you know what I mean? If that is, if you're like, I'm doing this, I am doing all the things, whatever, but we've got to be honest with ourselves and we have to be like, okay, am I willing to learn or am I not going to do it because it's hard? Guys, if you're not the 1%, you're not the 1%. We want you to be the 1%. We want you to change your life. We want you to take these things, but listen, we've got to stop saying that we don't have this or that we didn't want that. Be honest with yourself. You either don't have it or you don't give a damn. And if you don't give a damn, we want to lead your people. But we're not going to do this anymore. Of, oh, well, I didn't have anything, so I just figured it out. That's a lie. None of y'all are figuring it out. You have every resource from us. You have access to our team pages. You have access to all the things. It's not that you don't know. It's that you do not care. So decide. And that's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> do y'all have anything else to add? No. Okay. So we are going to stop the recording. We are so glad that you guys were on tonight.